I've been saying I'm going to turn it over to Brother Jim. But this time I'm going to turn the service over now to Brother Paul. <laughs> Want to turn to your hymns of 336. That'll be our closing song, song of invitation. But I want to say that I cannot feel this man's shoes, or any one of the other brothers here. I cannot feel their shoes. They do a great job of bringing God's word. Joe, Doc, Tom, Dan. Jimmy, they all do a great job, and that, that's something that I cannot do. Is that I just want to do, be able to do what he wants me to do. <coughs> Today's uh, sermon, I, I've been thinking on this for a little while, but uh, the month of July, what do we celebrate in the month of July? We celebrate independence. We celebrate freedom. And what this country stands for. <clears throat> and just a few weeks back, we celebrated Independence Day. The Day of Freedom. Fourth of July. Everybody sits aside. They fly out of the flags. And I, I'm a patriotic person. And... Uh, to remember those that sacrificed their lives so that you and I can be here this morning. And uh, we want to thank them for that freedom. We want to thank them for the sacrifices that they made for us. Some of them gave the ultimate sacrifice. They gave their lives. They laid down their lives that we today can stand here. They fought for freedom. They fought for deliverance. The Statue of Liberty was given to us by the French government in 1886. Because they was a friend to us. It's a symbol of freedom. Most of my sermon today is, is a lot of, I want a lot of reading. Uh, my thoughts. Uh, everybody here has their own thoughts about freedom. Everybody here has their own thoughts about what's going on today and about immigrants and all this. That's not for here. That's and uh, it's a symbol of freedom for many people, <coughs> nations that have left everything behind to come to America with nothing but the clothes on their backs. They forsake all. They give up everything and left it behind. You know, when we look at the Statue of Liberty, we see that arm standing high. The torch of freedom. The flame of hope. The promise of a future. Her light is shining in darkness to immigrants, desperately trying to gain freedom through the golden door. If you know the history of the Statue of Liberty, you know the things that she has. The golden door free from oppression, slavery, Poverty. That is the promise of American dream. The land of the free. That's what you and I today possess. We live in the land of the free. Why? Because our forefathers laid their lives down for us. They fought and bled and died for you and I. The thing that's called freedom. That so many of us take for granted. People trample our flag. They burn it. 
They don't have respect for what they have. The golden door of freedom is to those that are lost, to the needy, those that have been rejected. With a light shining high, it shows them the way of freedom and hope. But they have to come through the right channels, the right door to receive that freedom. They have to come through the right doors and channels of the government to receive liberty and justice. It comes with a price. They gave up the former way of life to come here. Our forefathers, when they come across on the Mayflower, they gave up everything to come here. They fought to keep, to keep this country. And in turn, this is what we must do when we come to Christ. We must forsake everything that the world has and the things that the world has to offer us. To become an immigrant of the kingdom of God. We were grafted in. God's statue of liberty and freedom is in the form of the cross. And we must come through the right channels to receive freedom from being a slave to sin. And we must reject everything and leave it all behind. Just as the immigrants did that came to America. Those that are slaves are the ones that are looking for a new country, a new start, a new way of life. <clears throat> They're looking for a new home. They're looking for that shining light and that hope and promise of Christ. The cross of Golgotha is healed. The cross that lights the way to freedom and eternal life. And you and I, we must come through that golden door. Jesus Christ is that light. He is the light that's shining, that leads us to way. John chapter 8 says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of the world. He is making a way for you and I. He is preparing a way for you and I. First John <coughs> chapter 1 <clears throat> Verse 5, it says, This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Just as that statue of liberty's arm shining high in New York's heart, shining the way to immigrants coming to the United States, Jesus Christ is light, is shining the way for you from a life of sin. He says, if we say that we have, we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. He is the only way He's the only one that can make you clean. He's the only one that can make you an immigrant of his kingdom. 
the light, this light gives us freedom. It gives us hope. It gives us life. And it makes us free from sin by His blood that He shed on the cross for you and I. It cleanses us from all unrighteousness. There's no other sacrifice that we can have other than the sacrifice of Jesus Christ when He died on the cross of Calvary to cleanse us from sin. John chapter 8. Starting with verse 31. It says, Then said Jesus to those which believe on Him, If ye continue in My word, then are ye My disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Freedom. Freedom in God's Word. They answered Him, We be Abraham's seed. We were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye, may, ye, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. If we continue in his word and we know that his word is true, then we're freed from sin. We are no longer his servant. We're being held in bondage. You don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. You're in bondage today. You're in a bondage of sin. You're held captive. Our men in World War II liberated a lot of camps. They were held in bondage. They were oppressed. They were murdered. They were, they were starved to death. They were gassed. Our men set them free. One of the greatest generations ever. So you and I can sit here today so that those people can have freedom. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 Starting with verse 19, <clears throat> it says, For through I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. Apostle Paul talking about himself here, and the things that he does for Christ. And unto the Jews I became a Jew, that I might gain the Jews, to them that are under the law as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law of Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. It says, To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made of all things to all men, that I might be by all means, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partakers thereof with you. Apostle Paul paid a great price. We know the type of life that he lived. That he carried men and women off persecute him, to kill him for the name of Christ. He thought he was doing the right things. He gave up freedom 
to be a servant, to win souls for Christ. That's what you and I need to do today. We need to give up everything so that we can be a soul winner for Christ. Our light needs to shine for Him. The freedom that He gives us to spread the Word of God to those that are lost and undone without their end in their life. Do we go around with a sour face on our look on our face? Or do we have a smile that people know that Jesus Christ lives in our hearts? That we've been freed from sin. We have been freed from sin when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. There's freedom in the power, from the power of sin. Freedom to worship Christ freely today in this country. A lot of countries don't have that. A lot of nations, they're oppressed because of the Word of God. China kills people for the Word of God. They burn their churches. Africa is killing Christians because of the Word of God. You and I today are blessed to stand here for the freedom that we have, for our men and women to give their life for us. You and I must give up stuff that we can have freedom so that we can be a servant for Christ so that we can gain the more for Him. Apostle Paul said that he gave up everything so he could gain souls for Christ. We, you and I need to be soul winners today. Romans chapter 6. <clears throat> Sermon verse 1 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Why should we continue in sin when we, we've been set free from sin? When we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, when His blood has washed us from sin. That doesn't mean that we don't sin, but we need to walk in the newness of life. We need to let the world know that Jesus Christ lives in us. He dwells in our hearts. We need to put on Christ. We don't need to let the world infiltrate into our hearts. Verse 5 says, If we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. I'm looking forward to that day. That we will be raised incorruptible. We'll have a body like unto Jesus Christ. The one that hung on the cross for our sins. The one that's gone to prepare a place for those that love and serve Him. Where there never be more pain, no more sickness, no more heartaches, no more sorrow. Freedom. Verse 6 says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should serve, not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. You've been set free from sin. You died out to it. When you was laid in that watery grave, and you raised to walk in the newness of life. It says, Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. I know that I'll be with Him one day. But I have to finish that race. I have to finish the course. I have to win the prize to get it. You have to finish the course. 
you have to finish the race or you don't win the prize. What is that prize? Eternal life. And the prize is an eternal life with Christ. Verse 9 says, Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no, no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore bring in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness but unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Why would we want to return back to the life of sin that we had before? Where there's chaos. There's bondage. There's shackles. We don't we should not want to return to a life of sin and bondage. Jesus Christ has set us free. Galatians chapter 5. It says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty or with Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. As I said before, Christ has liberated us from a life of sin. When we accepted Him as our Savior, there's happiness, there's peace. Jesus Christ. doesn't mean that we're not going to have troubles and trials and temptations. He told us we would. But these things are temporal. Why would we want to return to the life? Because we have died out from sin. We have been set free. We have been let out of prison, so to speak. We have been kept in bondage. Satan loves for you to be in bondage today. He tries every way in the world, every trick that he knows to get you back when you give your life to Christ. Every evil thought that he can think of comes into your mind. He tries to do every make you do every evil act that there is out there. We've been buried with Christ in baptism. We walk in the newness of life. We've given our life to Jesus Christ. There's nothing out there in this world that's worth turning your back on Jesus Christ. To turn the back on freedom, liberty, and justice that Christ has given us through His blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary for our sins. We are at liberty in Christ. When we put on Christ, we do not serve sin anymore. And I said, that doesn't mean that we don't sin. But if we do sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We take our petitions to Him, and He takes them to the Father. Jesus Christ is the golden door. The 
that we talked about in the Statue of Liberty. Jesus Christ is that door that you have to go through to receive freedom and liberty. Jesus Christ welcomes all to the door. <clears throat> the lost, the needy, the rejected. We all must go through this door. But we have to go through that door in the right channels. We have to go through the right measures. We have to meet the right criteria to go through it. He stands there today with outstretched arms for you and I. He stands there pleading, begging for you to come in. He wants to make you an immigrant of his kingdom. He turns no one away. He paid the price for you and I. He gives us the victory today when we accept Him as our Savior. You can reject that golden door. You can reject that freedom. You can reject all the things that Jesus Christ's kingdom has to offer you. But there's a price you'll pay for it for rejecting it. There's a price to pay that is eternal. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, as we get ready to close. Verse 57 says, But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you thank Him today for the victory that He's given you? Victory through Jesus Christ. God sent His only begotten Son. He said that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Victory through the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Victory when this life is over. When we stand before Him and hear Him say, Enter in. I've been a faithful servant. You've been faithful in a few things. I'll make you rule over me. Enter thou in to the joys of the Lord. That's what you and I are working for. <clears throat> We're working for that freedom. We're working for that home that you want to prepare for us. And it could be any day. We don't know the day or hour. Time doesn't mean anything to God, but it means everything to you and I. One day is as a thousand years with Him, and one a thousand years is one day. A blink of an eye to Him is a day. But when time ends for you and I, when that death comes, that's the end of time for you and me. There is no second chance. There is no do-over. The only place that we can find true liberty is in Jesus Christ. He died for you and I. I pray and hope that you've got something out of this message today. Pray, realize that freedom only comes, true freedom comes through the blood of Christ. As we stay the same.